Good afternoon YouTube. It is the 16th of May today uh, and I am back out on Dartmoor wild camping. I'm going to do a bit of secret squirrel work today. Uh, I'm going to try and find the geocache box that uh, Dean from Life on the Rocks has uh, hidden in amongst um, the rocks up there. Uh, now for those that don't follow Dean, um, he has uh, created uh, a geocache box. Within that box is uh, a link to his channel. I think you uh, you can use your phone, scan the barcode, uh, and then it links to, to his channel. And uh, there's also a booklet in there uh, in which he encourages you to, um, to, to write comments to him uh, and he'll read them out on his uh, channel. Now ordinarily, I can't really be trusted with a pen and a bit of paper because like any adult male, um, I do the mature thing of either drawing a house or a willy. Um, I'm not sure if that's just me or whether that's every adult male when they're given a pen and a bit of paper. Um, I'll try and be sensible Dean and I'll try and write something um, constructive in there uh, and not draw a willy. But obviously you will see in a couple of months time when you uh, check the booklet. So I'm currently in the car at the moment. I've parked the car at the Four Winds car park. Um, so I'll shortly make my way up to Great Mist Tour. Um, once I have found the, um, the, the geocache box, uh, my intention then is to uh, walk over to uh, Roost Tour, uh, where I will camp for the night. Uh, I've never been to, to Roost Tour before. Um, I'm not sure of the best way to get there. It's probably safer to walk back down to the road and then um, follow the road along and then walk up to Roost Tour from there. But that's the sensible thing to do. So I'll probably just walk down from Great Miss across the uh, the river there and then back up the, the other side to, to Roost Tour. I have got a new little gadget with me today, uh, which I will uh, try out a little bit later when we get to camp. It's loosely camping related, uh, but hopefully will be a game changer. So um, I will uh, show you that when we get up to, to Roost Tour. Uh, but for now, um, I will uh, bring you back when I get closer to uh, Great Miss Tour. We are now at Little Mistor. This is where I've come from, and I've got to be honest, I wish I'd stayed there because the weather seems to be sunny over in that direction. But that's where I'm heading. Great mess. All right, Dean. Where is this geocache? Look what 
we found. Hidden amongst the rocks, that little rock over there. Found it. Great idea, Dean. Really enjoyed that. Looking forward to the next one. Onward in that direction. In centre of screen, that is Roostor. That is where I'm hoping to camp. Actually wider than I thought it would be. Do I A try and jump between those two rocks there? Chance it across that. Go across that bit. Slippery. It went badly. Whoa. Hard to stop filming. That nearly ended badly. But. This is a very slippery river. But we made it unscathed. So that's a great staple in the middle of your screen. And I'm just gonna head straight on up, I think. Now at the top of Roostor. Oh, some track. I'm knackered after that. Let's get up to the top and see what the views are going to be like, shall we? The good thing about watching YouTube videos is that you can look at everybody else's videos and see where they pitch their tents when they come up on these tours. And I'm pretty sure I've seen Colonel Camp pitch his tent around here somewhere. It's a nice little flat spot there. Lovely views. Sun should rise over there in that direction. As you've seen in the time lapse, the tent is all set up now. Here it is. I just realised when I pitched it, big mound of shit right outside the front door, so that's great. Lovely smell of poo. Let's take a look at the sleep system. Same old usual suspects, really. The uh, Sierra design, the, the Sierra designs pillow. The Aegis Max down quilt, Sin Mat, uh, Exped Sin Mat 7, and then the Silver Mat just to provide a bit of protection to the mat, really. So that's the inside of my tent. Bags of room, needs a bit of a hoover.
tea now, just boiled some water uh, and I've filled uh, the Adventure Foods pasta bolognese. So I will uh, let that do its job. And uh, I've got high hopes for this one. Uh, a lot of other YouTubers have uh, said how nice it is. So hopefully it'll be nice. Just realized though, one major drawback to tonight's camp is that I've left my two beers underneath my car seat in the car. Gutted. I was really looking forward to watching the football tonight and having a couple of beers, relaxing in a tent. But we won't be doing that, will we? Just had that pasta bolognese and uh, it is very good, very, very good. I would say it's probably the best adventure foods that they do. So um, thank you for the recommendations and uh, I will definitely be getting that one again. Now earlier I said that I had like a new gadget that isn't camping related as such, but I think I will be taking it out depending if it's any good or not. Uh, on future camps because I think it will be a bit of a game changer. So this is it, the Jogo. Now I'm a big coffee fan and I always find that the coffees that I buy, and they can be the expensive ones or the cheap ones, they all taste the same, they all taste that they have that plasticky sort of taste to them. But this is hopefully going to change that. Right, so this and this is the first time I've got it out of a packet. Is the Jogo coffee straw. So it has the filter on the end, and the idea is, is that you fill the coffee mug, as you would normally, and then leave it four or five minutes for it to settle. And then you use this, which has got the built-in kind of French press at the, at the end, and you just suck it through the straw. So we'll give that a whirl in a minute and I'll give you a heads up as to whether it's any good or not. So this is the uh, the manual that it, well not the manual, but the leaflet it comes with. And these are all the benefits, look, zero waste. So you don't have to take home the coffee pods or the sachets. You don't have to take anything with you. It's highly portable. Apparently the flavor is meant to be very good, multi-purpose and it prevents your teeth from darkening through the staining of the coffee. So it's a win-win. There it is, look. And the Alps, I guess, in action. Right, the four minutes are up. Uh, I've given the coffee a stir off camera. Uh, so this is the first taste. I haven't tasted it pre-recording. So here we go. That is really good, like really good. That tastes like like actual shop bought coffee that you'd get in a coffee shop. That does taste really nice. I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit strange drinking hot liquid through a straw. But once you get over that, honestly, the taste is so good. That is good, in my opinion. That is a game changer. No more bringing out coffee pods or um, coffee sachets and having to take them home. This is what I'll be using going forward. I would recommend you buy a Jogo if you haven't got one. And I'm not affiliated to Jogo, by the way. I've got no monetary gain from uh, plugging this, but I just thought it would be a good um, thing that you lot could take out with you. It's getting a bit misty now. I can't really see anything. I just... The views have gone. I'm just going to get in the tent now, I think. I'll probably read my book. I would have been drinking my beers now, but obviously I've got them, so I won't be drinking them. I'm going to try and catch a bit of the Arsenal game, because I think they're on TV in a minute, so I might catch a bit of that. So I'm probably just going to have a, a nice relaxing early night. There's nothing much else to do. 
So I will um, catch you in the morning, YouTube. I know it might seem like I'm reviewing lots of products today, uh, and I don't mean to, but I just thought I'd uh, mention this chair that I've got. So this chair that I've been using today, which I've had for a few months now, uh, is the uh, Crazy Creek Hex 2.0, um, and you can only get it in America. Uh, I haven't seen it sold in the UK, um, but it's just superb. You can take it literally anywhere. You can take it to the beach. Uh, you haven't got the problem about the, the feet going into the sand. You don't have to buy that extra little um, footprint thing that goes on the bottom. You can sit on a rock, you can erect it on, on a rock. It's just brilliant and as you can see, I'm sat in a tent with it. And it's about 50 quid. This chair is, in my opinion, brilliant. End of my reviews now. Uh, I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna go to bed. Good morning YouTube. Well that was an interesting night. I was fast asleep and then I could hear noises outside and it sounded like there were two or three people outside just about to enter my tent so i put my big boy pants on and did the zip of the tent looked outside and was confronted by a pack of ponies all chewing grass outside the tent so uh i had to shoo them away i did try and get it on um, camera but it was it was just too dark i couldn't couldn't get them and i couldn't react in time to uh, get the uh, the phone um, I'm going to pack up now and head back to the car. It's not raining, which is good, and it doesn't seem to be particularly windy. So I'm just going to try and um, head across uh, the Great Staple Tour and uh, pick up the path back to uh, the main road leading to the Four Winds car park. Probably not going to do too much more filming on the way back. I'm just going to try and get to the car as quick as I, quick as I can and get home. Just going to take the quickest route down from Roostor. I'm going to head. I don't know if you can see it in the uh, in the camera view, but there's like a little house or pub down there in the middle of your screen. Head towards there. Follow the road all the way up to the Four Winds car park. So I've made it to the main road. We're at the Dartmoor Inn, and now I've just basically got to follow this road all the way back to the Four Winds car park. It's probably going to sign off now, so it's going to be a boring walk back to the car. So thanks for watching YouTube and I will see you on the next video.